Hey everybody, welcome to Tech Uploaded. I'm Chris, and today we're answering the age-old question, should I upgrade now, or should I wait for the plethora of options coming from Intel? Now, when I say plethora of options, that is not an understatement. We're talking a lot of technology coming out of Intel very soon. Z97, the new Haswell chips, then you've got the Haswell K series coming out that's going to be called Devil's Canyon. Then you've got Broadwell. Then move over to the X99 architecture that's coming, and you've got Haswell E 8-core chips and DDR4. And this is all coming before the end of the year. So what is an upgrader to do? I decided to address this topic because I've actually been getting a lot of messages, especially since doing my 4770K build, on the question of if now is the time to upgrade or if I should wait. Now, that is usually a question where my response is, if you need it now, upgrade now. And that still applies to an extent, but we're so close to the Z97 release that I would have to say now wouldn't be a bad time to at least hold out on the motherboard because with the Z97 boards, they're still 1150, and if you can just wait a couple of weeks, you can get a board that's gonna support the new Haswell chips, the Devil's Canyon, and Broadwell, and still be able to use today's technology on that board if you need to get a processor right away. So the whole thing gets kind of confusing, right? It's, you got Z87, and that's, you know, not really that old. I guess it kind of is now. And then you got the 4770K, which is the chip that a lot of people are looking to get, and that's the one that I think is really kind of making people kind of messing with their head because here's the thing and I'm gonna show some of these things in the screen so I'm gonna pull this up right now uh, you pretty much search Z97 and you're gonna get all kinds of different stuff that comes up uh, right here is the rundown on the Z uh, Z97 platform and it's it's kind of giving you a roundup here of all of the Asus boards so they're gonna have the usual suspects the tough ROG and then the classic Z97 series and with these boards, you're going to be adding a few features that you don't have on Z87 besides just being able to use the newer chips like the Haswell E, which the verdict is still, or not Haswell E, but the Haswell Devil's Canyon. And the verdict is still out on whether or not those chips are going to be able to be backwards compatible with Z87. So yeah, things are still muddy from what I've been researching with, the, with Intel on that. But nonetheless, these boards are going to add a few features. And if you can hold out for a couple of weeks, you're going to get the ability to utilize a few really cool technologies. And let me pull those up here. So taking a look here, this actually shows the M.2 and the SATA Express standard that you're gonna start getting on these 97 boards. And it shows the difference that you're gonna have here on the read with M2 going from about 547 uh, to 828 megabytes per second. And then looking at the right on SATA Express, you're going from 516 to 802. So that's a big increase and that's very substantial. Now, of course, the key here is you're gonna to have to actually own these drives, which right now they're fairly expensive. However, if you can get over that hurdle, once the prices come down, uh, you can see here's what the board's gonna look like right here. It's gonna be a really cool technology to have. And as soon as we start seeing these solid state drives drop in price, this is gonna be a really enticing thing for a lot of people because it's going to give you the ability to have an even faster SSD, which is hard to believe because there's some fast ones out there right now uh, than are available currently. So if you're going to be even buying a 4770K, it wouldn't hurt to wait for these boards to come out because you're gonna get technologies that you may be using down the road. Here's the other thing. If you really don't care about that stuff, Z87 boards will probably drop a little bit in price. Now, historically, they're not gonna see a big drop, but some retailers and, and online stores, they may be dropping them to try to make room for inventory, especially local stores. If you can find somewhere like Fry's or something like that that's gonna try to be getting rid of their inventory, that may be where you can score a pretty good deal. Now let's take a look at some of these other boards. So you've got the Asus series round up here and they're kind of going over all the different stuff you're gonna get. Uh, here's the Maximus 7 Hero. Now I'm really excited for this board. And I think this is one to really, really seriously consider looking at because I'm really happy with my Maximus 6 and they come in at under $200 for the most part, which is a heck of a deal considering everything that comes on that board. And then you've got the Genius still there, so that's pretty cool. And this is new, this is the Ranger, the Maximus 6 Ranger. So I'm not, you know, I need to do my research, but obviously there's gonna be some features on here probably that you're not gonna have on the Hero, but overall, uh, both boards look pretty darn solid, and uh, if you're looking for something in that uh, micro ATX, uh, this is this is a pretty pretty enticing option here as well. Uh, and then of course the Sabertooth series is back as always, and they've got two different variants of it now, which I think is actually a pretty good idea. 
you got the one with that shield on it, and then you've got the one without, which is kind of what they did with the Griffin, except the Griffin was MATX. But uh, this is giving you uh, some options that you didn't have in the last series that I'm aware of. I think they kind of did away with that option. All right, then Gigabyte revealed some of their boards, and look at that black edition. That is that is pretty sleek looking. I really actually like the look of that board. It's it's kind of rivaled by the uh, ROG series for me, but I'm kind of an ROG fanboy on the ASUS side. You know, so I got to say I'm a little bit more interested in that. But here you go with a little bit of yellow styling here on your ultra durable. And it, look, they've had, to, they've had to blur out. It's naughty. Something's naughty in that uh, Z7X. Mm, we all know what that is. Oh, uh, oh, look. Mm, can't look at that. Z97X SOC Force. Now, that board's kind of obnoxious in color. But nonetheless, uh, you can see that these boards all have those additional... SATA options on it, it looks like, from looking at these boards. So it's kind of hard to tell. The embargo is still in place on these. And then AS Rock came out today, and whoa, hello. Good morning, that is bright. But they've got their, their board out as well with the Killer E2200 Ethernet, it, it looks like, on there. So, man, they've, they're, they're advertising the crap out of that. I don't know what that is, but uh, it's all over the place on there. And again, if you look below the uh, SATA 6, you've got that looks like SATA Express on there. So, again... A lot of different options here, and the manufacturers are ready to pump these boards out. You are going to have a lot of boards to choose from come May 11th. So, should you wait? Yes, just wait. It's so close. I mean, even if your computer is just like put, just hold your horses. Hopefully, you'll be able to get your hands on these boards. There won't be a wait uh, when they come out. But again, just a few weeks away. Just, just, just hang in there a little bit longer. We're right there. Now, looking a little bit further down the road. Here's where things get kind of complicated. So these boards are going to come out on May 11th. You're also going to have a Hasbro refresh that's going to hit with slightly higher clock speeds. Not really a big deal across the board. It's going to be i3, i5, and i7. None of those are going to be K variants. So that's something to keep in mind. The K variant is rumored to be coming out, and I believe I have that article up on here as well. Here's the chart that confirms the May 11th date for those Hasbro releases. And you can see on here... Uh, there's a plethora of processors coming out on that date, but no K-series in there. However, uh, June 2nd, the first day of the Worldwide Developers Conference, and the day before Computex is when everybody's kind of thinking that Devil's Canyon is going to hit. Now, Devil's Canyon is a pretty big deal because it's taking the Haswell chip, which was really just kind of slammed for being pretty terrible with overclocking, unless you delitted the chip, you had a really bad application of thermal compound between the tim on the top of the chip where you actually made contact with whatever kind of cooling system you were using and the actual die of the chip itself. It just wasn't very efficient at all. And you really, really were playing a lottery when you were getting those chips because you never knew if you were going to get one where someone in the, you know, if you, if you were on a good bin or a bad one on, on what was going on in the manufacturing that day at Intel. So Intel has come out and said, we realize that was an issue. And with Devil's Canyon, we're building that chip around people that want to overclock. So they're actually going to be soldering the TIM on the top to the actual uh, die of the chip so that you're making direct contact when you actually connect your cooling unit to your chip. You are directly cooling down the core of that chip like you're supposed to be and not just kind of, you know, wherever the thermal compound was. And you know, Core 1 may be hot and core... Three may be hot, but core two is good because it's got a nice solid, you know, connection. So that's going to be gone. Those days are over. So you should be to be able to overclock the heck out of that Canyon, Devil's Canyon chip. And it's kind of the holdover before we get to Broadwell. So, you know, Broadwell, obviously, you're going into that smaller nanometer process. It's supposed to use, you know, 30% less power is what I've seen. I'm not overly enthusiastic about Broadwell. I don't think we're going to see any kind of huge performance gain, kind of similar to Haswell. What I do think we're going to see is computers, especially, you know, home theater PC builds and in the mobile space, where you're going to be able to get a lot more performance per watt out of the chip, not necessarily more performance overall. I mean, we'll see a little increase. We always do. But what I'm excited about, and oh, and that those uh, Broadwell chips are due second half of 2014, according to Intel. Now, during that same time frame, that's what I'm really excited about. And looking here, this is X99. So Intel, you know, announces this was back in March, but X99 motherboards and eight core CPUs as well as DDR4. Now, here's what I'm really pumped about. You're going to have, finally, an eight core chip that's going to be able to have 16 threads. So that's going to be really nice. And it's finally the next iteration of the 2011 platform, which that 
X79 had a heck of a run. It really did. It was around for a long time. You could use more memory with it. It was a higher end board. A lot of the workstation boards are based off of that. You had to have 2011 for most Xeons, the 1230 series, and, and I think there's another one that, that was in that range you could use on 1155 and then 1150. But 2011 was where it was at if you wanted to have six cores or, you know, it, it, more performance. You kind of went in that direction. Well, now they're taking it one step further with X99. So looking on here, uh, there's going to be DDR4 support, which is going to be really nice. And again, second half of 2014. So DDR4 is supposed to be coming in, I think, at clock speeds like around in the 2000s. I don't think we're going to see a lot of DDR4 memory that's going to be 1600 or 1866. It's supposed to be fairly highly clocked at the low end. So that's going to be pretty exciting. What the memory capacities are going to be of these boards, I don't know. That stuff's still kind of muddy. Uh, obviously, the embargo is still very much in place on these boards. There haven't even been any concepts out that, that I'm aware of. But X99, this is going to be this is going to be the big one, and this is what I'm excited for because you're going to be able to get the you know an eight core chip, a proper eight core chip for the first time on Haswell E, and that's going to be really exciting. So, I kind of want to break this down into three different conclusions. If you're looking to get a Haswell based chip, and you're thinking about doing like 4770K. You really should wait for Z97. At least see how that plays out. You only have a couple weeks to wait to do that. So just wait it out. See what happens. Now, if you're thinking about going with Devil's Canyon and you already have a decent system, you know, just wait. Wait until Devil's Canyon hits in June, maybe by end of June, early July. You might see the Z97 boards tick down just a little bit in price by that time because they'll have been out for a couple of months. And any of the bugs should probably be worked out at that point as well. Though I'm sure there'll be a BIOS update very shortly after these boards come out to take care of any kind of snafus that are there in the boards. So that's something to consider. Now, Broadwell. If you have no reason to upgrade right now, then don't. Um, and I would even argue that if you have an Ivy Bridge or a Haswell-based chip, you really, in, unless you're super, super want to be cutting edge and you really want to take advantage of M2, or the SATA Express, I don't see any reason to upgrade your processor to, to go to Broadwell. I just don't. I mean, that's my personal opinion. I don't think it's necessary, so I think you can hold out on that and maybe skip that. However, if you're thinking about buying 2011, I wouldn't do that right now. I would wait until the fall when X99 hits and, and see how that plays out because DDR4 is going to be a big deal. I mean, this is the first time we've had a jump in DDR memory from DDR3 in years. So it's gonna be the first platform that's really gonna start using that new memory. And we should see some really good performance gains on the X99 platform. So if you're thinking about buying 2011, cool your jets unless you absolutely have to have it right now because I think if you can wait until the fall, there's gonna be a lot to be excited about. All right, so that was kind of a long rant, but I wanted to kind of go over that with everybody because I've been getting this question a lot. And of course, these are all just my opinions and this was just kind of me sitting down and casually blabbing about my thoughts on all of this, but there's a lot going on coming up between now and the end of the year with Intel, and we're going to see some really big performance improvements, I think, especially at the end of the year. Not so much with Broadwell as I think we're going to see with the Haswell E series and some of the Xeon chips that are going to hit that are uh, Haswell Xeons, and I think there's going to be a lot to be excited about once we get into the September or October range. So if you're still running you know, a decent i-series processor, I don't think there's any reason to rush out and upgrade. If you absolutely have to buy a new board right now, wait for Z97. And if you're happy with your computer, if it's if getting most things done that you need it to do, then just, just chill. Be cool with it. Maybe upgrade your GPU. I could see that. You may need to upgrade your GPU. But then that opens the door to if you should wait for Maxwell on the NVIDIA side. Because that 750, that's setting a pretty good standard for that technology. So anyway... There you have it, my thoughts on the upgrade path and whether you should do it or not and how long you should wait. And as always, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. And don't be a stranger. And you know what else? Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I'm tech uploaded on Twitter. You can see the bird, he's gonna flap across the bottom of the screen, do, do what he does, he's tweeting. So anyway, see you later.